G'day and welcome. Uh, in this video we're going to examine the 25th integral in Jim Karanis' list of 100 integrals. And uh, they're fairly challenging in their own way. This one, I think, is the first one in the series, certainly the first one in quite a long while, that involves partial fractions. We have a product of two polynomials on the bottom, two fairly simple polynomials, and a smaller power on the top, considerably smaller power. So we could imagine separating it into two fractions. In order to work out what to put on top, we would, perhaps I should use a different colour, we would imagine uh, writing a polynomial of one order less than this. So one order less than two is one, so let's do ax plus b. And this has order one, so we just put a constant, c. And let's work out what we need on the top to make this relevant. Well, of course, to get this common, co common denominator, we would multiply top and bottom of this by 1 minus x, and top and bottom of this by x squared. So what would we get on the top? We would get ax plus b multiplied by 1 minus x, and we would get c multiplied by x squared. That would be our numerator. Now, of course, we want our numerator to equal 1, so, expanding, we get this, yeah, expand is probably the easiest way. Uh, we get ax plus b, that's 1 times that, minus x times that is minus ax squared minus bx plus cx squared. Now, just by inspecting this, we can see we have two x squared terms and there is no x squared term there. So, these must add up to zero. In other words, c and a must equal each other. That's enough for us to know at this point. Looking at the x terms, I suppose I'll put a box around them. Again, there is no x term here. So a minus b, lots of x, must be 0, so a must equal b. Well, that's helpful. And the only constant is b, and that must equal 1. So guess what? That does make life easy, doesn't it? a, b, and c must all be equal to 1. That's our little analysis. I will get rid of it so it's not in the road. So now... I know that I have 1x plus 1 and 1 over here. That's all I need. Now, how do we handle these two parts? This one, because I have a, a binomial on the top and a simple uh, x squared on the bottom, I would separate that into two. So I'd have x over x squared Oh, and 1 over x squared. And this one I'm going to change um, because I notice the derivative of this is negative 1, and I'd love to have a negative 1 there. So I'm going to write minus negative 1 over 1 minus x dx. And the reason I hesitated earlier is whether to convert this in my head at the same time. But I think you can see that x over x squared is really 1 over x. So that's just saved me a line of writing and I have limited room on my board here. So what's the integral of 1 over x? It's log x. Strictly speaking, log of absolute value of x. What is the integral of 1 over x squared, which is x to the negative 2. Well, it's x to the negative 1 on negative 1. Minus 
And because this is the derivative of that, we have the logarithm of this plus c. So putting this together, we can put these two logarithms together, but here, this negative index puts the x on the bottom, the minus sign comes at the front, so it's minus 1 on x, or negative 1 on x, plus the logarithm, that minus, logarithm of this minus logarithm of this is the logarithm of x over 1 minus x plus c. And there we have it. It opened up quite nicely with this lovely little separation of the fractions. And I don't think that's worthy of extra comment. I hope it's been informative and interesting, and I thank you for watching.